Hey guys, what's going on? Christian Shaw here. Welcome to another episode of the Becoming Bankable podcast. With me today, super excited to sit down with Kenny Yaglinski. He's a digital marketing expert and has owned numerous successful businesses within the New York Tri-State area, uh, including the area's first indoor tr- trampoline park rebounders. He's uh, gotten a business degree from Indiana University with a second degree in Chinese language from East China Normal University in Shanghai. Uh, he has founded and currently sits on the board of numeral, numerous successful tech companies in various sectors, including blockchain, finance, e-commerce, automation, and AI. Correct. And you also hold a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I don't know if that's yeah, true, sure. but um, yeah. But I'm super excited to sit down with you, man. Uh, this is uh, this is a really cool um, podcast for me because you're one of my first mentors and someone who's like got me started. Uh, so. Yeah, we've known each other for a long time now, man. It's been, what, almost 10 years, I would say? Something yeah. around there, close to that. Yeah, you're grown, man. I'm so proud of you, man. First and foremost, you do a great job. I mean, you've come a long way from, you know, your snotty nose undergrad, right? No, I'm just kidding, man. You were, you were good. You were hungry, man. You were, you were, you were always hungry um, and uh, doing, uh, you're doing big things, man. I'm proud of you. Amazing, man. Good Thank job. You, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, you're currently the uh, CMO, Chief Marketing Officer of Total Merchant Resources, which is one of the most successful business lending firms. Um, we've really popularized business lending, alternative business lending, um, by being featured on Shark Tank. And yep. you're the president of Yeg Marketing Inc. So yeah, I mean that's, that's that's like my consulting agency, right? Like that's something that we kind of that's like my main firm. Um, you know, kind of do consult, you know, consulting for various companies and sectors through that. Cool. So yeah, there's a few different ways that we can spin this, but uh, we can talk about marketing. I'd love to get into business lending and how to build businesses. That's that's what really what you do. Um, but first, kind of like take me back to the origin story. Like, how did this all begin? How did you first get in- interested in business? Oh, I was always like a little hustler, man. Um, I mean, like the first time I would say I ever started a business was like sixth grade. Uh, I went to the Roy H. Man in Brooklyn. And um, I lived across the street from a Herd's potato chip factory, so I could get like bags of chips for like ten cents, eleven cents, or some even less. And our school was selling them for like a dollar, dollar twenty-five back in the nineties. So like I would just bring like bags of chips to the school and just resell them for like half the cost. And I got you know, and then my dean essentially after like a couple weeks, like I guess we were like they noticed I was like taking away from their sales. And he literally took all my merchandise and suspended me, um, which is insane. But my, my mom freaked out. But um, you know that was like that was like my first like I guess kind of like entrepreneurial venture. Um, so, but I've always I've always been really interested in in you know always wanted to own my own company and, and various businesses and things like that. Um, I guess my first real big company was Rebounders, which was a trampoline park. I started out, so when I was in college, I was studying business, but I also trained mixed martial arts. I wanted to be a professional fighter, um, but the pay was so bad, I just we could, I just couldn't, I, I couldn't go down that route. I was training full time down in Tampa, Florida, and we would train at on Sundays. The whole fight team would hang out, and we would go to a place called Bounce, which was one of the first trampoline parks in the country. Hmm. So I'm looking at this place, I'm like. Man, this 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 is like an absolute gold mine. I was like, because it was a new concept, right? There was like two or three of them in the country. Nobody's ever seen a trampoline park. There wasn't really any big, you know, indoor family entertainment facilities. So I was like, I, I have to open this in New York and New Jersey. I was like, this is. I was like, if there's a gold mine out there, that this is definitely one, right? So I guess the life lesson there is something that I always kind of do, or I guess one of my strengths is recognizing opportunity. Um, either, you know, a new business opportunity or arbitrage in a certain situation. Um, you know, I, and so I saw that, you know, this, there's a new concept and this, you know, this, even though I was, I think I was 20, I was like 23 at the time. Right. So an uphill battle for me being 23 years old, trying to open, you know, a multi-million dollar company, uh, in a brand new sector, uh, where people can, can get injured. Right. So that's a super kind of uphill battle. Um, but you know, it's something, you know, it's, I, I saw the opportunity and I, I had to, I had to kind of, uh, jump on it. Right. So that was really my first, uh, major business venture. Um, so essentially, you know, saw that concept, did a lot of research on it, see who was kind of the manufacturers of products like that, or, you know, certain franchises. Um, and it took me a couple of years to do it. Actually, it was, actually I lie. It's about, it took me about a year to put it together. 
Um, what does that look from, like? What do you mean put it together? Like you had the idea, you were going with, with uh, uh, your buddies, and you're, you're like, this is an idea, this is a gold mine. And then how did you like, what happened in that first year for you to actually like go out there and start the business and, you know, get the lease? And sure, sure, sure. So first it was fine, like how to do it, right? Like this is a, a new concept. So how am I going to, you know, how am I actually going to build this, right? So this, that's essentially, let me put a business plan together, right? So I need to, I need to put a business plan, you know, f- from my brain to paper, organizing my thoughts and a way that people can then, you know, make an investable idea, right? So, um, you know, what is the go to market strategy? You know, how, how are we going to get the equipment? Um, who's going to manage it? What is, what is the POS? What is the operating? All that kind of stuff. So I was very green. Um, so I, you know, I, I needed a good seasoned investor. So I went through the net, you know, the easiest way it's, you know, it's not what you know, it's who you know as well. Um, luckily my, my dad went to school, was roommates and really good friends with an entrepreneur, businessman down in North Carolina. Uh, he owned a bunch of shoe stores, sneaker stores. So this was a bit out of his realm, but you know, if you're a seasoned business owner, you know, a lot of it is, you know, it is plug and play, right? If you can kind of grow one business, you can kind of grow another just because there's a lot of similarities in, in operating and opening things, especially in retail. Well, he wasn't the only one, but you know, I reached, you know, friends and family who, who, you know, invest in business, who owns businesses. So essentially took this business plan that I wrote, went to, you know, different people and pitched the idea to them and see who would actually, who would think it's a good idea and, and who would want to invest in it. And, um, you know, it's, it was such a unique idea. I, I did have some good, good, you know, uh, feedback and Benny gave me an opportunity and, and, you know, we, we put the money together and invested in it. Um, so the funding, I mean, it, it's well over a million dollars to open a trampoline park, right? So like the, the overhead costs, startup costs is, it's not like, okay, let me make a sales business and, you know, pitch, pitch these ideas. It's, you know, you need, you need a, at least a 40,000 square foot facility, right? You, um, which is, you know, for a warehouse and it's not, it's not, you know, you need a lot of collateral to kind of go to a major landlord for that, right? Uh, you need to buy the equipment, you need to lease everything. There's, there's a lot of, you know, it, we essentially had a restaurant in there, right? A full arcade, the equipment. So there was a lot of, it was actually pretty cool as my own kind of little fantasy factory, which is amazing to, to run. It was a lot of fun, but, um, I remember, I remember you know, there's, there's, there was a lot of, there's a lot of things that kind of, uh, that, that, you know, that went into for the operating. So we originally went to a bank, right? And banks are no help, right? So we got, I still hate Chase to this day. Um, so essentially, you know, we, we went to a bank, we, we had a business plan along with him who has his, you know, experienced businessman with a lot of capital assets. And they dragged us along for like six months. And at the end of it, they're like, oh, your, your projections are way, you know, ridiculous. There's no way you're ever gonna do like 1.5, 1.6 million in the first year. So like we can't invest in something like this. We did three point two million dollars the first year. Um, so we ended. Up, so we actually he actually helped me bootstrap it, right? So I had some money saved up. My parents. Uh, he had a lot of money. We got a couple other outside investors that loaned us money that you know through connections with him, and we essentially bootstrapped it and and opened it up in twenty twelve. Um, which is a whole nother learning experience because when you're opening major retail like that, you have to go, you have to deal with the city as well, right? So people looking to open retail businesses or, or brick and mortar stores, um, depending on the industry you is, you know, there's this, you have to get variances, uh, they have to be zoned certain ways if you're doing any kind of construction. So it, it took us, you know, once I, once I got it, you know, invested, we found an equipment manufacturer, you know, somebody to work with POS, all this kind of stuff to put together. Um, then once you're in the building, then it's, you know, it took us nine, 10 months to do the build out, get everything through, you know, everything approved through the city. So it was, it was a long, it was, you know, it was a couple year process to really open the first business, but it was such a learning experience for me because, you know, once I learned how to do that, it, owning and operating other businesses were, I want to say it, it was a much more simpler, an easier kind of, um, definitely an easier process. Um, I mean, we had like a hundred and some employees at one point there. Um, you know, and right, right from that, then I also, then I spun out a restaurant, um, literally, I don't know, a year after opening that because we had an oppor- again, opportunity, we did baked goods and things. So birthday cakes for rebounders. We were in a college town, things like that. So, but my second business after my first one was infinitely times easier to open because I knew the steps and things I had to go through. You know, this is what I have to do for lease. This is what I have to do for the city. You know, there's, this is what I need to do equipment wise. And it's a much, it's a much smoother transition. So, you know, get, getting, doing, running your first business and, and getting up and running. Once you're there, it's, you know, if you're really, 
if you can really see a clear picture, it's very, you know, you're very scalable, even in, even, even in the same business or other kind of adjacent businesses as well. Yeah. How did you, how did you start? Like, did you, did you build to sell it initially in the beginning? I'm talking about rebounders or, you know, the, the restaurant business as well. Like when you first built it, were your investors and you thinking of like, this is our exit strategy. We want to build this to sell it. We're going to get a quite like, well, we, well no, not, not on about, I mean, selling is always in the back of the mind, but we wanted to open a few locations up. Right. So I, I think the goal when you're doing anything, brick and mortar is multiple locations. Um, I mean, this was also over 10 years ago. So times have changed as far as, you know, last mile service, product delivery, like, you know, people not going out as much. So, I mean, I guess indoor family entertainment still is really good because people do need something to do going out wise. But our, our original goal was, okay, let's get this concept going and then let's open a bunch of these and, and scale, right? It's, you're, you're obviously, you're, you're, I guess most end game is to scale unless you want to build like a generational franchise. But I mean, sorry to sell, but you know, you're, our goal was to scale. Like let's, yeah. this is, we, we kind of know this concept is going to crush. How can we scale it? And, and that's, I keep that with anything that I'm doing, either from retail to brick and mortar or anything like that. And doing that also led me to where I am today because I despise owning retail and brick and mortar companies. It's just dealing with general public. You know, it's a different kind of workforce versus when you're really dealing with now, you know, focusing on, you know, technology um, and building software and building technologies. You know, the, you're, you don't have to deal with the general public. Um, you know, and that's something also people think, you know, don't realize like, oh, I want to be a business owner. This is great. But they don't realize getting what they're getting into specifically what their business is, like what they have to be involved with, you know, and outside just running a company, right? Your customer base is a huge, uh, ver- your customer base to your personality and kind of what you want to deal with, right? So not, you know, that's, I would definitely think people should really definitely have deep thought about kind of where they want to uh, Kind of where they want to start their first company, and you know, again with that, there's so many other other ways and businesses without really any kind of, um, you know, startup costs, mm. right? So there's there's so many options out there to not do brick and mortar now. It's just with ecom and the way the internet is now, there's it's so easy to make money online. Um, but you know, I would say the biggest with that really the two biggest things is you know, learn, learning how to sell online or just being a good salesman in general, right? Learning how to sell is probably the most invaluable thing that somebody could learn and have it as a skill because everything I just said, right? Like regardless of like, how am I going to do this operating? How, you know, how is this business going to run and all that kind of stuff? The way I got there is through selling, selling myself, selling my idea and selling and selling me, right? Your people, people invest in companies, but Mm -hmm. people, even myself, I invest in people. Right. If, if I think you can, it, you know, really the product, I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but you know, anybody and any, if I'm investing in somebody, that person can really make anything successful. Right. If you're a plumber, if you're a restaurant, if you're an e-com, if you're, if you're passionate and care about what you're doing and, and you, you have the drive to do it, they, you know, it's, it's that investment in that person is really going to, going to take it the wrong way. And the only way you can do that is through selling yourself and selling, you know, selling your idea it, it, besides your product. Right. So, I mean, you can sell a product or you can sell yourself. It's the same. Yeah, it's it's the same so every, there's the products is like, there's so many options available now. Anybody can sell, like anybody can sell most products out there on the market. So it's like, who is selling it rather than like, who, who's doing a good job of, of selling the product itself. People buy from people, like man. Yeah. People buy from people like there's a million companies of the same products, yeah. right? Or whether it's a loan or, or a service, but you know, people, people, one, usually people in most of the time, I think it's like 60 something or 70% will go with the first person they speak to. So, right. If somebody reaches out to you, you want to be first to the punch. Mm. Um, but they're also right. But you also have to have a connection with them, right? They, they yeah. will, they will buy into you even if your product is subpar to somebody else because they feel comfortable with you, that interpersonal connection. So how did all this brick and mortar business, like how did you transition into the online digital marketing sure. consulting space and like business lending? Like how, how did that happen? Yeah, sure, sure. So actually, so funny. So, you know, how I said before, we you know we did over $3 million our first year in business. I did all the marketing, right? It's so, you know, great. I have this, I have this awesome idea. I have this awesome product. How did I get it out to people? Right. And this is when Facebook ads first came out. 
like literally the first first iteration of really online marketing. I mean, you had some Google search, but you know, people weren't searching like indoor entertainment near me, right? Because again, it wasn't really a thing. So it's okay, how do you go and hunt the general public and show them what you're doing, right? And this is when social media first started to take off. So I, you know, I was like, okay, Facebook ads is going to be the greatest thing possible, right? So, you know, you can push birthday party, you can target your specific audience, especially back then there was like no rules for before the whole Cambridge Analytics meltdown of, you know, manipulating presidencies and things like that, right? Because that was kind of the power that you had back then. Um, but I mean, I, you were, I was able to pinpoint target my audience. I was able to, you know, deliver and show them what I'm doing. Obviously other outlets too. Like we had, I mean, there was a lot, you know, less options. There was like TV commercials, which I wasn't huge on because it's so expensive, but like we had some billboards. Um, the, actually one of our biggest things that really pop, you know, between Facebook, besides Facebook being the biggest, you know, thing that, that blew us up, we was Groupon. So like Groupon was like the first, that's when they first came out and mm. everybody was on Groupon and checking Groupon. Groupon was low key. A social was a social channel. It was like a, a social network for a while, like especially when it came in because, you know, there was never anything like, you know, group mass deal. So once, once I, between Facebook and once I went on Groupon, we had, you know, three, four hour waits every single day. It was, it was absolutely pure. It was pure intent. We were, we were servicing like two, 3000 people on a Saturday. It was, it was complete and utter madness, but yeah, I mean, so, so, you know, it's essentially, again, it's just playing with things, you know, for me it's, it's always, you know, it's trial and error. It's like, okay, cool. I have this idea. I have this product. What's going to work. So let me let, you know, let me try print media. Let me try Facebook. Like, you know, lay out, lay, I lay out all my options and I, and I test which one works and you, you scale the ones that work the best. And I kind of still go by that philosophy even to this day, whether it's running ads or, or anything I'm kind of doing. Um, so did, I just did the marketing. I really into Facebook advertising for that. Um, so then essentially, um, you know, going through all that, I, you know, my business partner's son got really sick. He had, L he actually has ALS. Um, so we kind of decided to sell, um, the company, right. Um, I work with a business broker kind of need it. you know, when you're selling a company like that, it's not the easiest sale. Business broker is the best way. And, um, you know, I got, became really good friends with him and I was like, okay, well, you know, selling this business, you know, this is probably going to work really well with, uh, Facebook advertising or LinkedIn advertising or, or different other different, you know, variations of like, okay, how do, how do I take, how do I take, you know, advertising and what I know in this brick and mortar and apply it to other industries, especially service industries with high, um, you know, profitable commissions, right? Mm -hmm. Cause like a business broker will get seven to 10% of a, of a sale, right? So you sell something for $2 million, you're getting a six figure, you're getting a six figure revenue stream off yeah. of that, um, with, with, you know, minimum overhead costs, the big, the hardest thing to do in, in business brokerage is getting listings to sell like the same thing in real estate. Right. But mm -hmm. I had a skill where I was able to get in front of the masses and, and push the rhetoric where I wanted via social channels, uh, via LinkedIn. And then it kind of just snowballed from there. Um, so like, yeah, we started to work with him and it worked really well. I mean, I think we signed up like, uh, $10 million worth of business in like the first few months of, of, of working with him. Uh, and then it, it was kind of just, all right, cool. How, how do I, you know, what other industries can I apply this to? And, you know, right. you know what would that have really good, uh, that have really good commissions and that I could, you know, that I could build a scalable business model and, uh, business. I was, again, I, um, I trained jujitsu with, uh, Jason Reddish, who's the CEO of total merchant resources. Um, he, you know, we always talked, we were, you know, very buddy, buddy, uh, and they're always looking for leads. And, and as you can see with most B2B companies, right? Like their, their heart and soul is, is leads, right? You can't, you can't make business if you can't generate leads. So this was something that I, you know, we were talking about, I was telling him that I was doing and he's like, you know, you should, you should generate some leads for us. So, um, again, same, it's literally the same kind of recipe, the whole lead gen thing and, um, started doing, you know, lead gen with them. Uh, it was, became really successful and I took a more over, you know, over time, took a more full-time role with them just because, um, they essentially come into the business. So, you know, I get a, you know, a profit share, all that kind of things. Um, you know, they, they saw a great opportunity to be like, okay, well we have this great product. How do we scale it? Well, we mm -hmm. need leads and we need the technology applied because things, you know, as you know, have gotten really, has grown really rapidly as far as automation, AI, 
um, data, right? Because it's one thing to generate the leads, but then it's, you know, how do you manage the data? How do you stay in front of these people? How do you maximize your conversion? How do you maximize, uh, you know, your revenue? So they, they you know, they, it was smart for them to see, you know, what the writings on the wall were. So they, you know, brought, brought me in to make sure that we could stay ahead of the curve and always create a, you know, and always have a steady stream of leads as well as a data management system and a way for their sales agents to always be fed and always be able to close as well as stay in front of their customers. Hmm. What, um, so yeah, I, I, I'm curious on the business lending side of this. So you must see like, over, like a bunch of like thousands of different businesses oh my God, and yeah. see who's performing the time of year, the seasonality, in, industry, economy. What, um, what have you kind of taken away from a macro data perspective about businesses and like who are the successful, what separates the successful businesses from the unsuccessful? Um, I know it's a loaded good, question. But. Yeah, it's a great question. No, it's a great question. Um, I mean, in this environment, um, you know, I could say what's doing really bad, right? Uh, construction, trucking, you know, logistics got really cold. Um, Restaurants are always is, is always hit or miss, but they're usually pretty good. You know, restaurants, a lot of restaurants close within the first, you know, I think it's like 12 months. But if you can get a restaurant that's open for two or three years, most likely they're going to be open for a while. So, you know, an older restaurant is definitely a safer bet because people get accustomed to ordering. You have your customers, you know, you're again, it's all location. Um, e-com, I think, is really good in this environment uh, is always will always be good. I mean, e- People, people always impulse buy, right? Regardless of what the economy is, as wild as, as it sounds, you know, people, 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 sorry about that. People love spending money, yeah. um, and you can entice you can entice people to spend spend money pretty pretty easily online. Um, trying to think any other really. The thing is, what I've really said with this business, it's every business can be successful, hmm. and it's really dependent on. The business owner a lot of times if they have their shit together or not right you can you can kind of tell when you speak to somebody immediately or at least for a few minutes how savvy they are um you know how well they know the numbers of their business you know what their plans are what they need the money for like are they planning on growing why they need this money right so it's it's really i would just say it's really dependent on on the person because a lot of times when you speak to somebody and they're like either all over the place or they're desperate or not you know doing something wrong. It's, it's super, if it's a one person shop or a 50 person shop, right? I, I think the success of the business really relies on the person running the company, right? Um, it's an easy tell to see. If yeah. Yeah. That's that. I mean, and that's the thing there's, I, I don't think there's a rhyme or reason. This is something that we talk about. Cause like I, I even run machine learning on our, on our data, right. To find consistencies in our data, to see where we can find scalable, Kind of like you know, see see where the consistency are to, to be able to scale, right? Like okay, well, this data specific area in this you know in this industry has been outperforming you know X Y and Z, but the problem is it's like a scatter chart, right? Like it's mm-hmm. there's there's it, it seems to be no specific reason as far as industry, uh, as far as location. Um, so that being said, any anybody can be successful in any industry, but it comes mm-hmm. down to the person running the company. That gives me hope. Of course, of course. <laughs> because I, it's every man. Listen, you got to stay hungry. That's the biggest thing, right? Um, and you got to, and you can't be lazy, right? It's and when you get successful, it's like getting successful and being comfortable. Comfort's like your worst enemy, man. Once you're comfortable, it's the you know you lose your drive. You lose you know you can lose focus on your company, and bad things can happen. Or you just stay stagnant. You don't grow as a human anymore. Um, but, you know, if you're hungry out there, I mean, we were kind of chit-chatting about this before, before we started. I mean, any, again, anybody can start a business right now yep. online. They can make a commission. They can, they can sell. All you need is data, a phone, right, and, and do a little bit of research on, on how to do email marketing and some text marketing, right? If, if, you can, if you can do that and then graduate a little bit to kind of setting up drips, like there's, there's so many good services where you can do email, LinkedIn, and and text strips and like listen you like you don't need to have a code like you just need how to send an e like do some research on how to send an email proper form like how do i send a text proper form and you can literally just build something out of like okay you know day one call day one send linkedin invitation day two send email day c three say send text right so 
if you if you can just get a you know a set of data or aka just looking online and calling people be like okay cool i want to do you know business loans or i want to do equipment leasing google you know companies in my area and and essentially you can anybody can find anything online right you can yeah. find the, the owner of something of their phone number of their email and just you got to you got to be hungry you got to reach and you just got you just got to reach out i mean it's essentially you take you can anybody can get a data set get a list you can buy a list you can scrape a list you can google a list you can find a list of any kind of businesses that you're that you're looking for take that list get the phone numbers make phone calls send emails send linkedin connections right and pick some pick an industry where you can add value to them right because there's certain industries no matter even if you're green or you know if you're selling certain products like lending right lending money which is what i do is a valuable asset to any single business owner right it doesn't it doesn't matter if you do five thousand or five million dollars a month right and everybody's going to need money at some point point oh oh one percent don't take money or fully bootstrap and never need to take a loan right like the the if you can if you can find something to add value you can get in front of people with phone calls with emails with text messages you just you just got to be hungry and you got to just stay on top and reach out and obviously you need to know your product like you know you can't sound like an asshole going into a conversation with somebody that owns a business right because this is probably you know this is a higher upper echelon of people in the country right the top right. one two percent so um know you yeah, know your product and success. be hungry man yeah i love it so it's funny this actually reminds me of what grant cardone says about like everybody always says like oh i can't start this business because uh i don't have the money to do it i need a cash flow yeah it's like it's bullshit. You you don't need money to make money. You need you have to go out there and actually. People do it. don't like people don't like to be embarrassed. People need to be get over embarrassment, and people need to get out of their own way, right? I'm sure you you've heard that a million times. People's minds just get in their own way with I can't, I don't want. It's just and what it breaks down to this is laziness, being scared, and embarrassment, right? Like who gives a shit if they say no 500 times on the phone? But if you make 500 calls, if you make 500 calls and have a product, unless unless you're beyond I, like I, like you just cannot function in life you're going to make a sale right like you're going you're going to eventually close something it's all everything is a numbers game in sales mm -hmm. right it's is being personable hitting hitting the phones sending x amount of emails and 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 you you will eventually close and you will learn the other thing is as you're doing things people don't realize like oh i don't know about this the best way to learn anything is being hands on Right. You can you can read as many books as you want. You can go out and, and listen to people and go to as many meetings and, and yeah. trade shows and all that shit. Yeah. Like the, the best way to do things, especially because people learn differently, is just go out and do it. Because as you're doing it, you're going to learn and you're going to see you will see, especially if, if you if you make it to that point, you're going to see where there's 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 alpha to be had and, and you know, profit and, and different ways to be able to, to get better and, and be like, okay, well, the, you know, this worked real well. So let me continue to do this going forward. Right. It's just huge. And you don't forget you're human. So like you're, you're going to evolve to what you're doing. You're going to, you're going to put what you're doing. You're going to learn from your mistakes. You're going to learn from your successes, but you have to just continuously do it over and over again. Right. I yeah. mean, I failed a so, thousand times on things. I still fail. What should I do? So, so let's say they have the confidence. They're willing to do it. They're willing to learn and like go out there and, and like make the sales like what would you say in terms of funding how like like now they need to like fund to get the equipment or to get the inventory to sell how would you um what would you recommend in terms of getting funding to, to start the business so like if i'm looking to get funded yeah uh, you or just the general public like the general business uh first time business owner looking to get start started up i mean google i mean just google you know fund my business or line of credit or whatever. Cause then, you know, you, as soon as you click on something, you're just going to get in a hundred people's funnels. Right. So you're going to see Facebook ads, Instagram ads, retargeting, right. And do your research. Um, you know, every company is you know, there's different companies for different industries lending wise. Um, for, if you're looking for startup capital, if you're looking for growth capital, if you're looking for line of credit, if you have bad credit, right. There's, there's you, with anything, do your research for doing anything. Right. You know, Google is a great tool. TikTok's a great tool. Uh, Instagram's a great tool. You know, see reviews. Um, and again, once you do that, people are going to cold call you, right? You're going to get called because there's hungry people on that other end, especially if you're looking for 
for loans and looking for money, there's, there's hungry people on that other end. Um, and you find somebody that you're comfortable with, right? Which flips to the original one, right? If I'm on the other side of it or either side of it, you know, I want somebody that I can one trust that I, two, I can rely on and three, that I don't have to worry about any other, you know, bullshit from other companies that I want to deal with. Right. Cause most of the time, and it's just kind of human nature is like, okay, I found my guy for money or I found my guy for this. I'm just going to stay with him because yeah. I like him. He's comfortable. And you even feel the thing is like, cool, he's making money off of it. I'm happy that he's making money off of what we're doing because, you know, I'm happy because I'm getting what I need and I trust this person and like this person. So he, I'm, ha I'm like even subconsciously happy that he's getting money. So there's no, I'm going to ignore all these other 2000 calls, right? Human psychology again, when it comes to, when it comes to selling. Um, Getting into the specific, would you recommend working with a lender directly or a broker? Go to your bank first. Always go to your bank. You're never going to get better money from your bank, but bank for most people are not an option. It's very difficult to deal with. For me, I'd rather go to a lender than a broker um, just because they have the capability of manipulating the money. And brokers are usually a lot of, there's a lot of slimy brokers. Um, not all, right? There's, as there's good brokers out there as well, but they're all about commission. Right. Bro brokers get paid on commission. Brokers don't get paid on funding. Lenders get paid on funding. Um, if I'm a lender, I'm lending my own money. Right. So like at Total Merchant Resources, we lend our own money to people. So we're able to essentially do what we want, depending on what your risk variance is. Right. But if, if it makes sense to us, we can do what we want with it. But it's also we want the person to be successful because we want to get paid back. Right. Mm -hmm. Once a broker gets paid their 10, 12 percent. After, you know, 30 days, because usually it's a 30, 30, 45 day clawback for brokers. Once they get paid, they don't give a shit. Like, what the hell do they care if you, you go out of business, right? Like, cool, I got paid. Obviously, I, they want to keep you as a client and, and renew you, but they're not, they, they're not monetarily tied. Most of them are not monetarily tied to you succeeding, right? Lenders Whereas I'm a lender. On the success of the business to pay back. I care. We care. We want to help you. Like, I have a lot of, I have a few clients myself that they call me for advice, right? Like, that's, that's what our sell is, right? Like our, our big thing is you're paying more, but you're getting, you're getting, you're getting somebody one that you can text at six in the morning and next day have money in your bank account, right? Two, you're, you're getting somebody that you have a relationship with that you can call if you need something or if you can ask us for advice because if you find a better option, like, hey, you know, we can get a line of credit from our bank for half of what you're paying. That's great. Pay us off and take that. Like we, we always will tell you with lenders, at least us, we will always tell you to do what's best for the business because that that's how they that's 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 what's most important to us because if your business suffers our business suffers you know we're, we're a partner we, we take we're a partnership in the se a sense without taking equity in people's companies right mm -hmm. um whereas brokers again they work they work on commission um that's you know that's really what the the main difference is that's again we so we do wholesale there's some we have some great brokers ourselves right there are some really really good brokers out there that will find you the best deal so you don't have to deal with that headache, but it's few and far between. And it's, it's very hard to trust people in this, in the alternative learning, you know, alternative lending space. Um, you know, the big companies are, are really good, um, on deck blue vine, but they, they're controlled by stock price, right? So they can decide which happens all the time. We get a lot of customers, you know, they have a down quarter. Hey, we're not lending anymore. You, your line of credit. We're not renewing your line of credit. I can't tell you I, if most people had blue vine, they can tell you that they've been cut from credit unless they're an immaculate, like perfect. And even them, you know, they, they also, ca also a lot of these other bigger lenders, they cap at 150, 250, will go up to a million. I mean, I, ha I, have, I have two clients that have million dollar, million dollar lines of credit with us. And you don't see that, you know, much often where you can, you can get that much money with a, a personable relationship. But, you know, for me, it's SBA, bank, right? And then direct, you know, a solid direct lender that you can trust. Or if you're so happy to lucky to find a fantastic trustworthy broker, that, you know, is syndicating on your deal. That is also, you know, they're essentially the broker is finding you a deal, but also putting their own money in the deal. You know, they, you need skin in the game to have to be trustworthy in this mm -hmm. business, for sure. Want to talk about a, uh, a little bit about your current projects, what you got going on? Yeah, sure. So, um, still, so Total Merchant Resources, where, you know, anybody listening, you know, we, TotalMerchantResources.com, dual alternative lending. We were on, we featured on Shark Tank. Um, we were one of the, you know, original pioneers in the alternative lending MCA space. And, you know, we, we have customers for 10 plus years because we're, we're very honest. You know, we're, we're not cheap. You know, our money is expensive. Um, if you have immaculate credit in great banks, it's not going to be that much more expensive than a bank. You're, you're paying for our service, our time, our, our expertise, our consulting ability. 
Um, but we will always lead people in the right direction. And this kind of goes back to what I said as being a direct lender, you know, we're always going to tell you what to do is best for your company, even if it's not with us. Because if you don't take money from us now, you know, you might call me in a year or two years when you're, you're in a pickle, you're in a bind, or you need a piece of equipment or you want to grow, right? So, um, you know, that's, that's really our, our main bread and butter. And I, and I really do, you know, love doing that. Um, my other passion, like I, you know, I kind of mentioned machine learning earlier. I'm a super, I'm a super nerd, um, you know, went into this whole AI kind of thing. Um, and, um, so myself and a, and a few colleagues, friends that I've known for a while, they're quants at hedge funds. Um, we're putting together our own quant fund, our own quant hedge fund, uh, to, we're essentially applying, you know, um, machine learning, deep learning to algorithmic based trading. Um, so taking large, you know, data sets of various types of data, it could be, you know, uh, price data, um, more specific, you know, a slew of data, putting it into, uh, machine models essentially processing out consistencies in that data and then building a portfolio around that and applying machine learning and deep learning to our portfolio to optimize that portfolio as well. Um, we're very early in this. Um, you know, it takes a lot, it takes a ton of time and processing power. Some of our, um, some of our models take a month, you know, weeks to a month plus to, excuse me, to, to actually finish running. Um, it's just because of the, you know, the sheer amount of data and processing power, but, you know, AI for me, AI is is really the future, and AI in various in various sectors, right? And there's a lot of scary things that are going on with um, with generative AI. I mean, you see, you know, videos and people. You know, I think the Drake and Weekend song is going to get nominated for a Grammy, and it was an AI person that made it, right? So, like, we're going down a slippery, you know, slippery slope, but. You know, there's, 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 a, that's just kind of like the front facing AI. There's, you know, AI is the really, you know, machine learning is really the best way to analyze data and analyze things for, for it to learn, right? And that eventually goes down to neural networks and, and, you know, AGI is essentially the goal for AI, right? You want to have essentially a, we're, we're essentially being God and creating another digital human to be able to do our task at full scale without, you know, needing, uh, you know, needing human human um, kind of working, which is also something I'm a little bit excited about too in sales because I'm actually working with a company right now that is building us an AI bot that will be talking on the phone. Oh, wow. So, yeah, we, we're feeding it, you know, hundreds, thousands of hours of our recorded phone calls and we're essentially, they're essentially building a bot that is, could essentially be a salesperson for us. So I, I don't I, I don't know about closing an MCA deal, but getting information in as far as call centers, I think AI will replace call centers within the next five years. I don't, I don't think there's going to be a need for India, you know, Dominican Republic, Filipino call centers. I think it's going to be all AI generated on sectors and they're going to have these AI bots pre-programmed for your sector, right? Like I'm, sell, I'm, I'm selling insurance. They'll have an insurance bot that you'll be able to buy and, and, and kind of, you know, be like, oh, cool, you know, I got to pay $500 a bot. And I have a bot that can take infinite calls, work 24 hours a day, and is, you know, speaks perfect English, and you don't ever have to worry about a call center again. And that's all machine learning based and deep learning based, right? It's all filling is filling up the machine with as much data as possible for it to be able to understand and, and, and analyze things and then kind of spit out a result, right? Um, you see that that's how, you know, that's how essentially self driving cars work, right? Is they're just inputting and analyzing millions of points of data kind of instantly of its surroundings and the variable outcomes of that data being input, like tree there, if tree, then do this, right? So like it's essentially processing through machine learning of how to interact with the environment, right? Or, or, or do that. So like, you know, you're, you're seeing that in self-driving cars and in right. finance in in sales, um, every so industry, every industry is going to be, affected. every industry is going to is, is a hundred percent getting, I mean, there's already, I mean, in our industry, AI replaced jobs. I know up two years ago, a year ago, I you needed we needed blog writers, right? We needed SEO content, blog yeah, writers. Right. I needed ad creatives. I Chat go to GPT. like I just go to yeah, I just go to I use ChatGPT for everything. The other thing is <laughs> through all this, if you have any questions or, or don't understand how to do anything, just go to ChatGPT, right? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, conversate with it, right? So like I use this AI as as a self as a person that I can have a conversation with that is as smart as me or or knows a lot of things, right? And it's just gonna, it's scary because it's just gonna, it's just gonna really scale. I was, I was listening to a podcast, I forgot who was talking about it, but it's the people that are not as smart will have AI to essentially teach them and, and show them everything. Be like, okay, you can do X, Y, and Z, but 
the the higher IQ people. Well, so they're they're so like the lower IQ people, their IQ will be you know raised up because they have a, essentially an AI assistant that can that, that can lead them through life. Now, uh, higher IQ people have a ha, ha, has a peer or even a peer with even a, a slightly higher IQ to have full deep conversations with of more like okay, cool. How do I if I do this? How do I scale? You know, how do I scale that? Okay, make me you know, and this is just what I do now. Okay, make me a you know, a content plan for this video or like write me, write me a Facebook, TikTok and LinkedIn ads um, based off of this video. And the video, all I do is I trans essentially content is king on social, right? Everything you do is really going to lie. If you want to have a really good convert, in my opinion, anyway, if you want to have really good conversion rates on yeah. Facebook, TikTok or Instagram, you need really good quality content, specifically video, right? So I essentially take that video, I transcribe it, which is free. You can just use, I, I Google, it will transcribe it for free. I take that transcription, I put it into chat GPT. I go, this is the video that I'm doing. This is our company. This is what we're, we're selling. Write me Facebook ads, TikTok ads, you know, Instagram ads with, you know, certain hashtags. Um, and, and, and they spit it and they spit it out. So I literally transcribe our video. I put it into chat GPT and then I get my full content plan based off of that content and video that we shot. Um, and I, I always ask it to, I always ask Chad GBT to reiterate numerous times as well. Right. Cause a lot the, if you take the first thing that it spits out, it's usually decent, but if you go like, that's good, but I like X, Y, and Z better. Cool. Now take this and do this instead. Right. So you really need to have a back and it will understand it with you. Like I, I talk to it as I'm talking to a person, right? I go, I like this, but I don't like this. I need you to do, I need you to more to take that, but I need you to elaborate more on, you know, why. Right. And then it will spit different iterations back to me. And now I essentially just took my content. I put it into transcription. Now I have, you know, a full slew of multiple ad creatives that I can use for that. And then I can also take that and go, OK, great. Now, now create and mean SEO optimized blog article uh, based on this as well. And I can take a couple of those. So now now in, you know, 30 minutes of work, I have 30 days worth of blog content, ad creatives and everything that I used to have to, would have had to pay somebody thousands of dollars a year ago. And now that, now that job is completely eliminated based on AI, yeah. but it's, yeah, it's, it's quite amazing what the capabilities are right now. Um, especially as, as market. Jobs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if you're con I mean, content writers don't have jobs anymore. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no need, there's no need, there's no need for a, for a content writer at this point. You, you have AI that can do it. Um, you know, prompt engineers is probably going to be a, a big one in the, in the, in the near future. And you, you see that with a lot of companies that they're looking for, for people to, as prompt engineers to interact with things like chat GPT in order to, um, you know, put a more scalable, scalable mm -hmm. systems in place with, with, within their own corporations. Yeah. Just a final note. Just wanted to ask like, what's, what is on the radar for the marketing consulting firm? Like what, what are you currently working on there? Uh, yet marketing, like. What are you um, What are you interested in there? Yeah, been really like I said, we've been really really focused on this whole you know AI this AI thing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're doing I'm doing a TV show now, which is a little bit different. I usually do B two B. That's more content based, right? When you do when you do any kind of like TV or or movies or things like that, it's really just like you know it's just trying to get things to go viral and 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 you know put put your content out towards the correct audience and to try to get the most interaction with. So it's. You know, brand, you know, branding versus selling is, is, you know, quite, quite the different marketing scheme. Less about growth, right? Because once you're in, a, believe it or not, it's once you're at kind of, you get to a point where, where you have a good reputation and, and you, you've been put out there and you know a lot of people and things, you get recommended to people all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, a lot of times is, is understanding opportunity cost and saying no. You know, most of the time you should say no when, when you get to a certain point because you have just so much capacity. So, you know, right now it's just continually, you know, kind of perfecting what, what we're doing and, and just picking, choosing with who I want to work with. But it's still just staying on top of current trends, right? Is, is how do I, how do I get better and how do I drive down costs and increase conversion with what we're doing, right? I found our niche, you know, I found like what we were like, what to do, but you know, how, how do I stay ahead of the curve and, continuously grow what I'm doing and, and get better. Right. And that a lot goes with, with AI and, and increasing conversion through sales and, you know, you know, what, how, how are automations getting better? Um, you know, Zapier make 
are there, you know, what other automations are out there that, that run smoother and there's less like date, you know, data issues or, or things bouncing around. Um, so it's just constantly, it's just kind of constantly staying in front of the, the eight ball of just trying to, to do what we do, but incremen- in- incrementally get better at, at what we're doing. Um, in order to, to really scale, right. Cause they scaling. Um, so yeah, that's, I, I, you know, it's, it's also, you know, again, with being a business owner and an entrepreneur is, you know, how much do you, you know, what is your capacity and what, what is your work life balance like as well? Right. Like, do sure. I, can I, can I scale to 10 million a month and get a thousand clients? Yeah, I'm sure I could. Do I want to? No, because I, I enjoy, I enjoy working a certain amount of time and being able to focus on new projects and new things and exciting things and not have to, you know, and not have to have such a worry headache about, you know, more money, you know, is, I don't want to quote, but more money, more problems, right? The, the more you're, the more you're doing, the more of a headache you're going to have. Right. So yep. it's also finding kind of what, what the good work life balance is, is for you. Um, so for me, you know, I think I found something, you know, where, where I, I'm at a really good place, but it's just always getting better and getting more efficient, right? Cause the more efficient I get, the less time I have to spend and the more money I will make all at the same time. Love it. It's awesome, man. Well, thank you for hopping on. This is yeah, bro. Good. It, was, it was good talking to you, man. I, I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'd love to, love to come back anytime. Yeah, sure. dude, that'd be really cool. I'd love to, you know, stay in the conversation about all the stuff that you're learning AI ML wise, and just like stay on top of the, the, the trends, what, what you're seeing. So dude, yeah, that's dude. I mean, you slip, you die, man, in this, you know, in anything, it's, especially with how fast things are growing now and how rapidly things and just, you know, even, even just cr- how easy it is to create things from our mind, right? Like mm. you don't need a, you don't like software engineers are going to be extinct in the next couple of years with how well AI can code, right? Like most engineers are like, even the quants that I work with now, it's like, okay, well, I need to code this. You don't need to hire an engineer or do massive research. You just go to chat GPT or a similar kind of, you know, uh, LLM yeah. and, yeah. and it just kicks out what it kicks out what you need. Right. So it's you can there's going to be millions if not billions of people going to be left left behind in the coming years so it's just like you just you just got it you got to stay in front of it right um where can people connect with you like um if they want to collaborate connect have an idea sure i linked linkedin is great man i i I love i still love linkedin linkedin is is i think the best way to network with people also the best way to find people if you're in sales Right. Like if you're like, oh, I don't know where to start, start on LinkedIn, just go into the search bar. You know, like if you're in a certain niche, find people in your niche. One, you can either learn from or two, you can sell to. Right. Like LinkedIn sales navigator, it's 70 bucks a month and you have unlimited leads. Right. Like there's tools like hunter.io or reply.io that you can essentially click a button and and pull people's information. Um, But just LinkedIn, if you're in sales, you should be you should all be all over. You should be all over LinkedIn. Um, but yeah, LinkedIn, my name, Kenny Iglinski. Um, you can, I'm sure you'll post it in the, I'll uh, post it in the notes. In I'll the put it in the show notes down yeah, below. Yeah. We can I'm always looking, always looking, you know, to, to help, to mentor, um, people looking for business loans as well. Um, or any kind of information. Um, you know, I, I don't blog. I don't tweet. I probably should. I just don't, most of the time I'm not really, I don't know. I find this, I find it weird to share my thoughts and, and kind of put my knowledge out there, which I think it's something that I eventually, need to get over because I, I have a lot to a knowledge and information for people to, to learn from and experiences yeah. and, and hiccups. So something that I probably should work on as, as a person, but for now, you know, feel free to just reach out via LinkedIn, shoot me a message, you know, you know, send a, send a, a connection request and any way I can be assistance for sure. Love it. Thanks, man. Of course, bud.